This is my new watch cleaning setup. This is the um, LNR 111 ultrasonic watch cleaning solution and the number three watch cleaning rinse. We are going to use a uh, three jar method. I'm going to use one jar and that will be for the cleaning solution. And then I'm going to have two progressive jars for the rinse. Here's a closer look at the new ultrasonic cleaner. Um, it is for one much bigger than the other cleaner. It has a uh, stainless steel basket instead of a plastic basket. Stainless steel interior tank like the other one. The major advantage is you can set a timer on this one. So if you want to run it for 12 minutes, you don't have to hit it, you know, every three, uh, four times every three minutes. The other advantage is this ultrasonic cleaner has heat and heat increases the efficiency of your ultrasonic cleaning. So here's the plan. I'm going to take these three jars once they have the uh, cleaning solution and the rinse solution in them. They're going to sit in the water bath in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. So the water level will be up to about here and then we'll try to match that with the solution on the jars. I'll be using these baskets to uh, bathe the parts and then to move it along from after it does the clean We'll bounce off whatever excess we can, then we move it on to the rinse, and then finally on to rinse two. What I plan to do is then empty out these parts into the uh, Petri dish. This is a heated dryer for fingernail polish. And uh, what this is, is it's just nothing but a fan here that blows air down. It has two settings, there's cold and there's hot. And I'd, I'd say it's warm because it's designed to put human hands in there. You know, it's, it's not going to roast uh, whatever you put in here. And it's a fairly gentle fan. This dryer very nicely accommodates both of these Petri dishes. We turn it on and it's going to dry the watch parts. Oh, that feels really nice. So from there, that will be the final stage in my watch part cleaning. From there, I bring them back over to my watch repair bench, which is in another room. So that's my plan. And uh, I actually have another one of these watches, this uh, Hoyer 8440 quartz watch with lots of mechanical parts. Um, it's just a coincidence. One of my buddies had the same watch in high school as me. He developed some very similar problems so um, I have it already taken apart on the bench. It's just waiting for a cleaning. So that is going to be the first project that we clean here and we'll see how it comes out. So uh, thank you for joining me so far. Oh, um, what I did want to say is one of the things that was important to me is um, A, because I'm using liquids, I was a little bit concerned about spills and also I don't want to lose a part here in the shop. I will never find a part in here if I lose it. So um, what I used was this. This is a uh, boot tray. It's just an, an inexpensive plastic tray. It's nice and sturdy. And so uh, since it has the walls, I'm hoping it provides um, you know, a little bit of protection. If, if something pings, it hopefully will stay in here. If there's a spill, it will contain it. Um, because the base of this is kind of waffled, I did put a uh, marble tile down here just so this had a nice flat place to stay. Oh, and the other thing I want to see, I have all these things I, I meant to tell you, is I made these, um, these little hooks. This is nothing more than just some plastic tube and I took some stainless steel wire. If you wanted to suspend a few different parts in here, and then put it through the system. The nice thing is once you're uh, suspending it in the solution, it's then very easy just to lift up your parts, move it over to the rinse, run the ultrasonic some more, pick it up, move it over to the next rinse, and uh, there you go, you're good to go. So for me, part of the fun not only is working with the new gear, but also getting to customize workspaces. 
So I hope that by sharing some of these ideas, uh, you get an idea of what works for you. Again, this isn't really supposed to be a how-to tutorial. This is just a video of what I've done, what's been working, and uh, you know how I've progressed. I, I hope this, uh, I hope these tips are helpful on your own watchmaking journey. Okay, um, I'm going to go load up some of these baskets, and we're going to actually do some watch part cleaning. Looks like pee, smells like pee. Oh, I made a mess. Oh, so sloppy. Before I jump into this, I wanted to show you a quick mod that I did. So I put four furniture bumpers, one, two, three, four, and these are just silicon uh, stick-on bumpers, the type that you would use on a uh, cabinet door. This made it much more quiet and much more stable, and I also decided to put another one of those marble tiles here to create a more stable base. So what is 42 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 42 degrees Celsius is 107.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That sounds good. I'm running the ultrasonic vibrations while the cleaning solutions come up to temperature and making sure the lids are loose so pressure doesn't build up in the jars. I'll put the small parts capsules into one of the mesh baskets with a chain to make it easier to move between the jars. As you can see, I've strung the watch case, movement, and bezel on the wire hooks. The watch case back will just be tossed into the jars and moved along by grabbing it with tweezers. Per the instructions on the LNR cleaner, I'm doing a five minute wash cycle and two five minute rinse cycles on each batch of parts. You can definitely see bubbles rising up, so I know that the ultrasonic waves are being transferred through the glass of the jars to the liquid inside the jars so we can reach the parts that I'm washing. our final basket and we also have this the watch back I'm just gonna drop that in another five minutes I'm shaking off the parts and blotting them lightly on a clean microfiber towel then it's into the dryer while we advance our production line of parts baskets.
out of the dryer, the watch case, main plate, and bezel look fantastic. I'm emptying out the small part capsules carefully into the petri dishes for drying. Since this is my first time using the dryer, I don't know how much the parts might blow around. The five minute wash cycles is just the right amount of time to keep the production line moving. We're gonna ease it under. By easing the dish into the periphery of the dryer, the parts get the warm moving air, but don't get blown around as much. I'm also turning the parts so any wet sides get dried. Overall, I'd call this system a success. Here's the results of my first watch cleaning using the new ultrasonic setup. The parts look great. Granted, this wasn't a dirty watch to begin with, but everything did come out shinier than I expected with no spotting, rust, or signs of residue. As a word of caution, the LNR cleaner is ammonia-based and needs to be handled with gloves and caution. It has an odor I found a little irritating to my nose and eyes, so if at all possible, your workspace should be ventilated. The nail polish dryer worked great on my watch parts, but the fan strength has me a little nervous. I'd like to try modifying it with a fan speed control and maybe some undermounted LED lights. When I do, I'll post it here for you on the channel. Now that I have a system in place, I'm excited to move on to my next projects. I already have a cool 1950s Longines dress watch disassembled that needs a cleaning and some TLC. If you missed it, please check out part one of this series where I step through my beginner watch cleaning tools and techniques. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and turning on those post notifications so you're the first to know about my new shows. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel by clicking the thumbs up button. And if you have comments or questions, I would love to hear from you. I'm Mike. The channel is Watch With Mike. Be good, be well, and be safe. And I look forward to our next time together.